Ever wondered what the difference between MPLS and SD-1 is? Well, you're not alone. These two acronyms have been buzzing around the tech world lately, often leaving many perplexed. MPLS, or multi-protocol label switching, has been a go-to transport protocol for over two decades, but it's being challenged by a newer, more flexible contender, SD-1, or software-defined wide area network. But what makes them different? Why is one seemingly being preferred over the other? How are they impacting the field of network engineering? These are the questions we're going to tackle today. We'll explore the world of MPLS, delve into the realm of SD-1, and put them head to head to better understand their roles in the ever evolving landscape of network technology. So strap in and get ready for a fascinating journey into the world of networking protocols. In the next few minutes, we'll delve into the world of MPLS and SD-1 and how they are reshaping the landscape of network engineering. Let's start with MPLS, also known as multi-protocol label switching. Diving into its history, MPLS has been a crucial component in the world of networking for over two decades. Born out of the necessity to speed up networks and make them more efficient, MPLS has earned its stripes as a reliable transport protocol. Now let's get into the nuts and bolts of how MPLS works. At its core, MPLS is all about speed and efficiency. It achieves this by assigning labels to data packets. These labels instruct network routers on where to send the packets, essentially creating a predetermined high-speed path through the network. This is a stark contrast to traditional IP routing, which requires each router to independently determine the next hop for every packet, creating a potential bottleneck. The beauty of MPLS is that it's protocol agnostic. It doesn't matter whether the data is IP packets, ATM, Sonnet or Ethernet frames, MPLS can handle it all. This universal nature of MPLS makes it incredibly useful in the field of network engineering. MPLS has found its niche in certain industries and for business critical applications where steady reliable connectivity is paramount. Industries such as finance and healthcare, where every millisecond counts, often rely on MPLS. It's also commonly used in telecommunications to enhance the quality of VoIP calls and video conferencing, providing a smoother and more reliable user experience. However, MPLS is not without its limitations. It requires physical circuits, lacks the flexibility needed for today's cloud-based world, and can be costlier than its alternatives. But it's important to remember that MPLS has been a tried and true method for network data transportation for years, proving its worth in many industries and applications. Though MPLS has been a reliable transport protocol for over two decades, it's not the only player in the game. Let's move on to its contemporary counterpart, SD-WAN. SD-1, or software-defined wide area network, is the new kid on the block. And it's not just a new kid, it's more like a prodigy, quickly revolutionizing the way we approach network management. So what is SD-1 exactly? Well, it's a software-based approach to managing wide area networks, or DAWANs. Rather than being tied to physical circuits, like its older cousin MPLS, South Dakota, WAN is flexible, agile, and perfectly suited for today's cloud-centric world. It's like comparing a steam train to a bullet train. Both can get you from point A to point B, but one does it with a lot more speed and efficiency. One of the key advantages of SD-1 is its ability to simplify WAN management. It's like having a top-notch traffic controller overseeing your network. It can prioritize critical business traffic, ensuring that essential data gets the fast lane while less important data takes the scenic route. This way, your business operations can run smoothly without being hampered by traffic jams in your network. But it's not just about efficiency. SD-1 also brings robust security to the table. It's like a virtual fortress, providing secure and reliable network connections. Whether your team is working from the office, from home, or from a coffee shop halfway across the world, South Dakota, WAN ensures that they can connect to your network safely and reliably. Moreover, South Dakota, one is a key player in the move to a multi-cloud environment. It's like a universal adapter, making it easy to connect to and switch between different cloud platforms. This flexibility, coupled with its cost effectiveness, makes SD-WAN a popular choice for organizations transitioning to the cloud. With its ability to prioritize critical business traffic and choose the most reliable and cost-effective path for data transmission, South Dakota, one is becoming the go-to choice for many organizations. Indeed, South Dakota, one is not just the new kid on the block, it's the new wave in network management, and it's a wave that's set to become a tide, 
reshaping the landscape of network management. Now that we've got a grasp on MPLS and SD1, it's time to put them head to head. Let's start with MPLS, the seasoned veteran of the networking world. It's been in use for over two decades, a testament to its reliability and efficiency. The strength of MPLS lies in its predictability and performance for business critical applications. It offers a dedicated path for data transmission, ensuring data packets arrive at their destination in a timely and ordered manner. This makes it ideal for real-time applications like voice and video conferencing. However, the traditional nature of MPLS also brings its own set of challenges. Its requirement for physical circuits means it lacks the flexibility to quickly adapt to changes in network demand. This can be a bottleneck for businesses that are increasingly reliant on the cloud. Additionally, MPLS can be a pricier option, especially when compared to internet-based alternatives. Enter SD1, the new wave in networking. It's a software-based approach that brings agility, cost savings and simplicity to the table. SD1 can prioritize critical business traffic and choose the most cost-effective and reliable path for data transmission. This means it can dynamically adapt to changes in network conditions and demand, which is a boon in today's cloud-centric world. SD1 also simplifies one management. It offers centralized control and visibility, making it easier for network administrators to monitor and manage the network. Plus, it's inherently secure, combining networking and security capabilities into a unified solution. But it's not all rosy for SD1. Its reliance on the public internet can sometimes lead to inconsistent performance, especially when compared to the dedicated paths offered by MPLS. And while it's typically more cost-effective than MPLS, implementing an SD1 solution can require a significant upfront investment. So why are enterprises transitioning from MPLS to SD1? The move to multi-cloud environments, the need for cost reduction, and the demand for a predictable user experience are driving the shift. SD1's flexibility, cost effectiveness, and ease of management make it an attractive option for many businesses. But it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Some companies are in a hybrid state, using both MPLS and SD1 to leverage the strengths of each. As you can see, both MPLS and SD1 have their unique advantages, and the choice between them depends on a company's specific needs and circumstances. So, to wrap up our discussion, we've taken quite a journey today, delving deep into the world of network engineering. We've explored both MPLS and SD1, two critical components that determine how data is transported across networks. In the first half of our discussion, we looked at MPLS, a traditional transport protocol that's been in use for over two decades. It's a tried and true method, but it does have its limitations, including a lack of flexibility for cloud connectivity and the need for physical circuits. Despite these drawbacks, MPLS remains relevant for certain industries and business critical applications. Switching gears, we then dove into SD1, the new wave in network engineering. This software-based approach allows organizations to prioritize critical business traffic and choose the most reliable and cost-effective path for data transmission. It simplifies WAN management, providing secure and reliable network connections for remote work and cloud adoption. It's also a foundational element of a SAIC architecture, combining VPN and SD1 capabilities with cloud-native security functions. We've also highlighted the trend of companies transitioning from pure MPLS to a hybrid state, incorporating both MPLS and SD1 in their network architectures. This approach allows them to leverage the best of both worlds, ensuring a predictable user experience while reducing operational costs. In conclusion, both MPLS and SD1 have their place in network engineering. The choice between them isn't a matter of one over the other, but rather a strategic decision based on the specific needs and goals of your organization. And with that, we've demystified MPLS and SD1. Hopefully, you now have a clear understanding of these two critical components of network engineering.